because the more I buy cheap food, the more I experience these true costs that we're going to talk about in a minute, and the more I have an experience of not enough. So instead of it being just a balancing feedback loop, I have a reinforcing feedback loop that undermines my original intentions. So we're going to talk, we're going to look at what these unintended consequences are. Because what are they? What are we actually paying for our food? And Haley's going to help us with that. Okay, so in order to look at the un unintended consequences, we made a mind map and we have four major groups. There's community, economy, public health, and environment. I wanted to know if you guys have any examples of an unintended consequence that go in any of these groups. Well, if you don't, um, an example of public health would be obesity, but not just obesity, there's malnutrition. Any, you want to help me out here? What do you pay for? When you get cheap food, what does it cost? No. What are the other, other consequences? It sort of says it's a big carbon footprint. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Environmental so degradation. Yeah. Students' inability to focus on teaching more like elementary school kids who don't get enough to eat, they, um, they have a really hard time actually focusing in class time. Do you think that would go over on your year? And community, probably. Another one we thought of for community was lack of food sovereignty. I was going to also put that there's um, things called uh, food deserts, uh -huh. which is actually, there's one in the north. Community, you think? Yeah, Are you guys familiar with what a food desert is? If not, it's basically an area where the, the most readily available foods are from convenience stores or unfortunately are going to be provided with um, some sort of um, like EBT or SNAP or something like that. And so they're they're really low quality. It's a cheap, cheap food that are coming from not really grocery stores, but unfortunately convenience stores, so processed foods, not really fresh or local or, or anything that would really be considered nutritious and um, sustaining for like a good, healthy lifestyle. Does anyone want to add anything to the mind map? I do. I think for economy, it's probably a big one would be like conglomerates and, and big box over, I guess, those like small, pretty sported or just um, like local markets that like are run by like mom and pop. And so when you're looking for a job, yeah. you're forced to participate in a huge economic model instead of somebody, a system that actually could care about your needs. Another one for environment could also be factory farming and like the multitude of negative effects that we can go off of that, that come from that. Um, Overproduction. Yep. And big, food waste. Big box goes to lower wages too. Mm. And so you get, a, you support a slew of these when, when, you, when you shop for price, for the price, especially for the lowest price. Even when we buy a, a, an, an affordable organic option, we're not, we're, we're sometimes investing in a selection of these unintended costs. So, my question is, how do we end up with 